Hello friends, how are you doing today? So in this video, I'm going to touch about um, microservices architecture and how that differs from uh, service-oriented architecture. And in olden days, how the services were developed and modern days, how the services are being developed and what are all the differences between uh, service-oriented architecture and microservice architecture and why most of the organizations are going towards microservice architecture. Okay, let's go to the topic. All right. So before getting into the topic in detail, I just wanted to explain this microservice architecture and the service-oriented architecture in simple terms. Okay, so let's take an example of building a car. So what happened in olden days when you build a car, you bring in all the technicians, all the talented folks in a car manufacturing unit, and then build the car parts like you know the car door, engine parts and tire whatever the parts needed for the car will be built and assembled in one place right so in modern days what happens the car doors are manufactured or built by someone else they outsource it to someone to do it and car engine is built by someone right and car tires were built by someone and everyone do their um, job and make sure that the parts are working fine test it out and bring in it one place and assembled it and then assemble it and then uh, sell it, right? So that is um, called the microservice architecture. In olden days, all the workforce were together and it was centralized, tightly coupled. In modern days, all the workforce are decentralized, they are working independently and they have a lot of freedom, right? This is how service oriented architecture and microservice architecture differ, okay? So coming to the question like why most of the enterprises are going towards microservice architecture and why they are adopting microservices and why most of the developers are building microservices. The answer to the question is simple. So in 2000, the microservice architecture emerged and most of the cloud service providers, they built their services using microservice architecture. Okay. So basically the microservice architecture Benefits we know, right? It's uh, loosely coupled, decentralized. Developers can work independently and build the microservices, right? Because of those matured uh, benefits, most of the cloud service providers adopted this microservice architecture framework to build their services. So nowadays, if you see uh, the major cloud service providers like uh, AWS, Azure, IBM, Google Cloud, any cloud service providers they build all the services right you learn about the services when you learn about uh, uh, aws services azure services ibm services and google cloud services right for your certification or your uh, implementation purpose so those services were built by using microservice architecture okay so when it comes to an enterprise uh, they wanted to build any application to run in any of these cloud service providers they will prefer microservice architecture so that they can uh, easily integrate with the, the cloud service provider services okay so this is the reason most of the enterprises adopt a microservice architecture framework and build the services in microservices okay all right so i wanted to share one more thing in this video when it comes to microservice architecture the adoption implementation and uh, creation and deployment of these microservices must follow certain framework, right? The TOGA framework in conjunction with or in integration with microservice architecture will make wonders for the enterprises, okay? So that was the reason the TOGA 10 introduced a, a separate dedicated module for microservice architecture. So let's get into the document provided by TOGA. They are talking about like how the microservice architecture fit in perfect with the TOGAF framework. And as an enterprise, when you adopt TOGAF and when you bring in the development team to build the microservice architecture, this will be a perfect combination and it will make wonders for your enterprise. Okay, let's go. I hope you can see my screen. This is a TOGAF standard and I got this uh, link by adding this microservice architecture as a library in my download library list and then I got this uh, HTML page. Right now microservice architecture uh, in TOGA framework is available as a HTML page and I think in future you will get it as a PDF file. 
So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go through pages in this uh, microservice architecture in TOGAP framework, and uh, I'll share the link in the description. You can go through it. I'm not going to walk through each and every section. I'll just uh, touch upon the high level details of the each section so that uh, you can get to know at high level. And um, when you get time, just uh, go through the document in detail so that it will be helpful for you to implement a microservice architecture in uh, conjunction with um, to cap framework okay start with introduction and uh, overview about microservices architecture and how microservices architecture is defined and also like uh, how this enterprise architecture in the distributed world works with the help of microservice architecture are explained in these sections and uh, the section three talks about like implications of each architecture in the TOCAP framework, right? The TOCAP framework consists of like business architecture, data architecture, application architecture, technology architecture, right? So those architectures and how those architectures are, what are all those implications of those architectures in the microservice architectures are explained in this um, section three. And when it comes to section four, you will learn about uh, how you can use this TOGAF framework for microservice architecture. Basically, TOGAF framework is the bigger uh, picture, and you can adopt this TOGAF framework to build anything in your enterprise, right? So you can take this TOGAF framework and build a separate project for your enterprise. And it can be a microservice architecture based project, or it, it may not be a microservice architecture based framework, okay? So in this uh, section, what they are talking about is like, uh, if you take a TOGAP framework, how it will fit in right with the microservice architecture. So basically, when it comes to TOGAP framework, if you are preparing for TOGAP uh, certification, definitely you might have come across all these phases, right? The architecture vision, business architecture, information and system architecture that talks about uh, data and application architecture, and phase D talks about the technology architecture, and phase C talks about opportunities and the uh, solutions architecture and phase F talks about migration planning and phase G talks about implementation governance and phase H talks about architecture change management. So basically, when it comes to this TOCAP implementation for your enterprise, when you adopt any project uh, with this um, uh, TOGAF framework, uh, what will happen, you will have to go through all these phases, right? If in the business architecture, you talk about uh, the business requirement, how the business looks like and what is the key business use case to implement all those steps. And when it comes to information and system architecture, you get to know about uh, more data needs and application needs of your enterprise and start implementing with the help of your architects. And also when it comes to technology architecture, you talk about software and hardware requirements which are needed for implementing a project by adopting this TOGAF framework. And when it comes to opportunity solution, you will think about like uh, how to implement the product, how to deploy the product, all those stuffs. When it comes to migration planning, like if you are uh, in the journey of migrating your legacy applications to modernized uh, pace or uh, cloud migration journey, and you talk, talk about like migration planning, implementation approach, all those stuffs. And um, in the G, place C, you talk about implementation governance and also you get to know uh, with the implementation strategies, deployment strategies, all those steps, right? And um, here in this document, uh, how this microservice architecture, if you're developing a microservices project, if you're developing a project using microservice architecture, how you adopt this uh, TOGAP framework and implement that, right? And the section five talks about preliminary space. And um, in the preliminary says what are all stakeholders involved in developing this microservice architecture project in your enterprise and what are all the principles of microservice architecture and how those principles uh, will go in hand with the TOGAP framework and uh, maturity and readiness assessment uh, when you build a microservices using um, your microservice architecture and uh, when you fit in with the TOGAP framework how this readiness um, maturity and readiness assessment uh, can happen and uh, governance and support strategy for your uh, microservices architecture. Um, when it comes to governance, right, right it will be like uh, multiple types of governance, like corporate governance, IT governance, and enterprise architecture governance, and also cloud native governance. So when you build a microservice architecture with the help of a TOGAI framework, you must cover all those governance areas. How the initial architecture repository and microservices reference architecture go in hand in hand, 
and what are all the benefits of using uh, tokap framework when you build a microservice architecture the section 5.5 talks about like uh, the responsibility distribution how uh, you engage the architecture team what are all the architecture team you will engage with all those uh, details are explained in detail in this uh, section coming to this uh, sixth section that is phase a architecture vision so when you start implementing or adopting this microservice architecture for your enterprise to build a project and deploy uh, what is your architecture vision right if you adopt a toga framework and uh, implement microservice architecture in um, connection with uh, the toga framework you will get to know the best practices and uh, approaches that they followed and uh, made a successful uh, framework the toga framework right so that will help you to reap the benefit of the gap framework and also the benefit of microservice architecture so when you implement uh, uh, your project with these two uh, one framework and architecture the enterprise will get the benefit of both uh, the gap and microservice architecture right and uh, section 6.1 talks about nature of the project what type of the project uh, you build in the microservices basically you create microservice component and you create the microservices and uh, you integrate the atomic business functions with the microservices and the user interface will access through and get to uh, get the benefit of all these functionalities governance and change management is across um, all the phases basically governance talks about it governance enterprise governance architecture governance all those steps and change management talks about like if there are any issues in your architecture or implementation how the changes uh, are uh, introduced and how the changes are fixed all those steps 6.2 talks about the detailed implementation specification so when you implement microservices what are all the specifications uh, suggested by uh, toga framework and how that will help you to implement uh, those um, specifications and 6.3 talks about the vision and 6.4 talks about stakeholders concerns and business requirements and uh, the phase 7 talks about business architecture so when it comes to implementing uh, the microservice architecture or microservices based project for your organization when you go along with your toga framework uh, you adopt uh, the business uh, architecture phase of toga framework and understand about the business functions and uh, business details business requirements business stakeholders and uh, discuss about the business function how the business de- uh, function decomposition happens and how that will be beneficial for implementing this microservice architecture for your organization all those concepts are explained uh, in section 7.1 and the section 7.2 talks about constraints so when it comes to section 8 they touch upon this uh, phase C of the togap framework uh, information system architecture uh, phase of uh, togap framework basically that uh, talks about data and application architecture which are needed for implementing your microservice architecture for your uh, uh, business use case okay phase 9 talks about the technology architecture so when it comes to implementing uh, the microservice architecture for your organization with the help of togap framework what kind of software and uh, hardware requirements how do we implement uh, the microservice architecture with the help of this uh, analysis done on the phase d of uh, toga framework that talks about technology architecture basically that talks about software and hardware components of uh, the toga framework right and uh, phase 9 touches on this microservices in detail how your source units are looking like this and how the execution units are going to be like this after uh, deployment units um, are implemented right so phase 10 talks about uh, opportunities and solutions basically they talk about uh, how the transformation happens how the organization transformation happens how the technology transformation happens how trans- data transformation happens in this um, opportunities and uh, solution sections of toga framework and how that scope transformation happens basically in your current uh, state of architecture it may be like monolithic and uh, very tightly coupled architecture and the transformation uh, roadmap happens and the post the transformation the target state will be microservices so this is how um, the transformation happens and uh, the togap frameworks uh, opportunities and solution phase helps you to do that when it comes to phase f migration planning so if your organization has been using this uh, monolithic uh, tightly coupled architecture and uh, when you adopt this toga framework and also this uh, microservice architecture to migrate how this migration happens from uh, legacy to the modern one 
how your cloud migration happens from on premises to cloud how your uh, modernization happens from your uh, legacy to the modern way so those uh, details are explained in this section when it comes to this uh, microservices work packages they talk about like uh, how development of microservices happen how operations team help you to the microservice development and uh, what kind of um, modification needed what kind of uh, uh, environment setup needed all those stuff in this uh, microservice work package section further section talks about value and cost reporting and uh, phase g talks about implementation governance now you have uh, migrated your legacy application to the modern uh, microservices phase uh, application and also you migrated your um, monolithic to the microservice architecture state so now it comes to the implementation how do you implement this uh, work package how do you implement your project with the microservices uh, architecture by using this agap framework and implementation governance details are explained in this phase g what are all the governance approaches and phase h is uh, architecture change management so basically architecture change management talks about like after implementing the microservices architecture for your organization if there are any changes comes right when the changes come basically if there are any issue with your uh, microservices there will be a change request raised and those change requests are maintained in the repository and uh, those change requests were taken in the order of priority and then implemented right so those change management processes are explained in detail in this phase h architecture change management what are all the organization architecture process for this change management and how the change management solution architecture look like all those stuffs and finally the summary talks about all those sections and they clearly explain about acronyms and abbreviations of this uh, microservice architecture so basically this is a very good package for those who are willing to learn about microservice architecture and those who want to implement togap framework on their organizations along with the microservice architecture right hope um, this video will be helpful i will give the link in the description below you can download and read and uh, if you are in the journey of uh, migrating your uh, legacy applications to microservices based architecture follow this document it is very helpful and uh, as a enterprise architect you can uh, confidently go and implement these process and successfully complete the migration project take care bye